Hello, I'm so glad to have you join us on the Value Chain TV News Update. I am Kabir Lawal with the news. Few hours after the Nigerian Labour Congress embarked on a one-day nationwide strike, the federal government has summoned a meeting of the Tripartite Committee on the new national minimum wage for tomorrow, June 4th. Chat Moses completes the report. NLC and TUC had on May 31st directed its members to embark on an indefinite strike from June 3rd. The action, according to the unions, was over the failure of the federal government to increase the 60,000 Naira minimum wage it offered to workers and its refusal to reverse the recent increase in electricity tariff. This is even as the Senate President, Goswil Akpabiu, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akumi, Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabiamila, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edun, among others, failed in their efforts to stop the proposed strike after a marathon meeting with NLC President Joe Ajero and his TUC counterpart, Festus Osifu. However, as part of the mobilization for the strike, TUC directed the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengasan, Association of Senior Staffs of Bank, Insurance and Financial Institutions, Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria, and other senior staff association to ensure total compliance. For Value Chain TV, Chat Moses reporting. Nigeria has been thrown into darkness again after the nation's power grid collapsed early Monday morning. Officials of the sector said the grid collapsed at exactly 1.47 a.m. According to experts, the shutdown is not unconnected to the Nigerian Labour Congress commencement of an indefinite worker strike to push demand for a new national minimum wage. Earlier, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagwebi, faltered the organized labor over the nationwide strike which commenced today. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, has said that ongoing economic reforms initiated by the federal government are yielding positive results. Wale Edu noted that in no distant time, they will return the economy to the path of sustainable growth and drive down inflation drastically. The minister who spoke during a TV interview said the government has paid 7.3 trillion Naira draft from the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN under the Ways and Means policy in line with government fiscal discipline priorities. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Oil, Senator Enike Lokwabiri, has assured that President Bola Tinubu-led administration will continue to rely on the Petroleum Training Institute, PTI, Eforum Delta State, for the development of manpower in the oil and gas sector. The minister, who was represented by his senior aide, Roland Oyelemi, gave the assurance during the PTI's matriculation ceremony of students for the 2023 and 2024 academic session of the Petroleum Training School. Henneken Lokobiri assured that PTI will continue to receive special attention from the federal government to enable it meet a mandate of turning out well-trained and qualified technicians and technologists to man the oil and gas industry. He noted that the government was committed to strengthening infrastructure and other facilities at the institute and Lokobiri said that the PTI remains a critical center, adding that Tinubu's government will not neglect the institution. The Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dele Alake, has said the federal government will deploy technology for the surveillance of mining sites across the country. This was disclosed in an interview with newsmen in Abuja. Dele Alake said the technology will be in addition to the 2,222 personnel of the Mining Marshal Corps drawn from the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, to combat illegal mining. The corps deployed across the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, were also trained on modern warfare by the military to secure Nigerians' natural resources. The Angote Petroleum Refinery is set to generate an annual market worth $21 billion for Nigerian crude oil. This was disclosed by Chairman of Angote Refinery, Aliko Angote, during a visit by Minister of State for Defense, Bello Metoweli. Bello Metoweli commended Angote's bold investment and highlighted their positive impact on the Nigerian economy through wealth creation and job generation. The minister reiterated the federal government's commitment to safeguarding such 
pivotal investment, ensuring they contribute significantly to economic growth and employment opportunity for the nation. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has announced revocation of the license of Heritage Bank PLC with immediate effect. This is accordance to a statement issued by Akama Sidi Ali, the Acting Corporate Communications Department of the nation's Apex Bank in Abuja. Sidi Ali said that the action was in accordance with the Apex Bank's mandate to promote a sound financial system in Nigeria and exercise of its power under Section 12 of the Banks and Other Financial Act. The statement noted that the action became necessary due to the bank's breach of Section 12, Subsection 1 of the Bank and Other Financial Act of 2020. The Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS has allocated $9 million to aid refugees, eternally displaced persons, and stateless individuals across its member nations, including $1 million specifically designated for assisting terrorism victims in Nigeria's Northeast. This was revealed by Chairman of the ECOWAS Permanent Representative Committee, Musa Nuhu, during the 2024 ECOWAS Ambassador's Retreat held in partnership with the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, UNHCR, in Port Harcourt, River State. The organizers emphasized the urgent need to address forced displacement caused by violence, political instability, and climate change. The theme of the repeat focused on enhancing protection for refugees, IDPs, and stateless persons in West Africa in finding solutions to forced displacement. That concludes the Valuchin TV News update. I am Kabir Lawal. Thanks for watching.